testing one two three testing Woo, you guys i am super late to filming this i'm super late to the new moon and capricorn party so please excuse moi but hello and welcome to my new little setup okay i just have to tell you really quick I freaking moved, which is why I've been a little MIA, okay? I've also been questioning my purpose and some really massively deep life questions lately, but we'll get to that another time. <laughs> welcome to the new moon in Capricorn and welcome to this video. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle. I do astrology and all kinds of other cool shit here. So if that's your vibe, make sure to subscribe before you leave. You know the deal. And yeah, welcome to this new moon in Capricorn, you guys. I am super excited to talk about this. Honestly, this is my second time filming this video because I've been a little insecure lately the last like week or two since I've been like really having this massive, you know, this massive shit happening. Like I've been like really questioning my purpose, what I do here, maturing and growing up and like just all of these really big questions. And so I tried to film this the first time and it came across a little awkward and weird because I haven't been filming in a little bit, a couple weeks now. So, so we are doing this a second time. The horoscope part of this video where I go over each sign is still going to be the same from the first time. But that is like super quick because it's a new moon. It just, yeah, just stay for the beginning. Okay. Because this is where you get all the tea and then you can just see where it's happening. Like what area of life it's happening for you at the end. Okay. So anyways, welcome. We have a new moon in Capricorn. What the fuck does this mean? A new moon is a dark moon basically it is when the moon kind of disappears for a little bit because it is in the rays of the sun's light the sun and the moon are aligned in the sign of capricorn a new moon because it's dark represents a new beginning so think about it as like a seed being planted in the soil right for it to grow in the darkness right a baby in the womb it's dark when you imagine something you close your eyes you know like all of that stuff i'm sure you've heard before but creation happens in the darkness in case you didn't know so a new moon is literally dark and it is a time of creation but this new moon is a powerful one because it is right on the winter solstice like super close to the winter solstice basically like practically on it okay and if you didn't know you should be setting your intentions for this new moon because this is the real new year's okay the calendar is wrong okay <laughs> the whole new year's resolution thing really is from the winter solstice that is the real actual tradition that was around a long time and way before the new year's resolution thing and this is why a lot of people likely don't end up achieving their new year's resolution i mean maybe it's just a theory but still it can't hurt okay do your resolutions your intentions whatever you want to call it now now is the time okay so this is when you want to do it so anyway so we have a new moon a new beginning also an ending simultaneously we are ending out one massive chapter the last year of our lives and starting into a new one so this is the time to really plan you know and this is why capricorn rules a lot of what it does this new moon in capricorn is about new intentions new seeds planning for our future planning for success planning for the long term, okay? Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign, therefore it's practical, it's grounded, it is very much about the material realm, things materializing. So this is a time to plant your seeds, right? Plant your seeds of what you want to materialize. This is a time to focus on your goals, to focus on what you wanna achieve in this new year and plant your seeds for those things right now. Okay, Capricorn really takes us to this place of understanding how to be real, how to focus on what's practical and how to be grounded about shit, okay? This is a time where if we've been living too in our heads, if we've been too dictated by our emotions, if we've been too all over the place, too distracted, this is a time that's gonna really pull us back to center, okay? Capricorn season is a time where we get real, where we get practical, where we get raw, and we take some accountability for shit you know this is a time of really taking accountability taking responsibility for your life okay and getting shit done getting your responsibilities done focusing on what needs to be done capricorn season is not about instant gratification and that really goes in to this particular new moon in capricorn because this new moon in capricorn is squaring jupiter in 
Aries. Jupiter and Aries wants quick gratification. It wants shit to happen now, yesterday, fast, quick, let's go. Like, let me just get all my energy together, put it in this direction, and let's make shit happen. Capricorn is not like that. Capricorn is worried about the long haul. Okay, it wants to build success over time. That way it's stable and secure. So right now we could really be seeing a kind of focus shift towards what's more stable, what's more practical, what's more secure, what's going to actually build us up over the long haul or be successful for the long haul and not just right now, right? This isn't about overnight success. This isn't about, you know, trying to get that quick gratification. This is about the long term, baby, right? What's going to actually be fulfilling in the long term, what we can actually achieve for the long term, what's going to last the test of time. That is what this energy in Capricorn is about. So again, if you've been a little bit too out there lately or distracted or whatever, this energy is pulling us back to focus on what needs to be done right here, right now. Okay, because those little actions, those little achievements, those little goals, you know, that that can lead to the bigger goal, like we have the bigger goal, but there's other things that need to be taken care of first before we can get there. Okay, there's steps to getting there. And those steps are the little things in between that compound, that build on top of each other and end up getting us to the big goal, right? So we can set the big goal right now, but we better be prepared to follow that up, to back that shit up with the practical shit, with the practical everyday actions, the, the work that's going to get us there, that's going to help us achieve what we desire, right? So this can be a time of planning. This can be a time of, you know, if you've been neglecting certain things, it's like, okay, time to take responsibility, time to, to, to get this shit done, you know? and really put our energy towards the things that are in our 3D reality instead of being on our phone all day or going out with friends all the time or whatever, like any kind of escapism, any kind of, you know, shit that has us distracted or not in the here and now focusing on the task and duties that need to be done, our responsibilities right here, right now, that is going to go bye-bye. Or if you keep focusing on it, you're going to feel like shit. <laughs> I don't mean to like, I'm not trying to fear monger or anything, but that's going to happen. Okay. I've seen it happen over and over and over again with Capricorn season and Capricorn energy. The more that we focus on, you know, other shit that is not these stairs, right? That, that is not in the steps, is not in the process, is not in the plan. The more we are going to feel unaccomplished, the more we are going to feel like shit about ourselves, the more you know, the less structured we're going to be. Capricorn brings structure, okay? It brings structure. And the more structured and organized we are in terms of structure, in terms of the plan, in terms of, you know, building towards our future and our success, our bigger goals, the better we feel about ourselves. The more we feel achieved, like the more we feel like we've achieved, the more we feel success, the more confidence we grow. You know, Capricorn also is associated a lot of the time with respect and boundaries. And we respect ourselves by following our own boundaries. We respect ourselves by setting our own standards and following them, by hiring our standards. You know, when we're putting shit off, these little duties, these little tasks off that we know need to be done that are our responsibility, we're sending a message to ourselves that, we can't handle it. We can't take it on. There's something, you know, we're basically sending a message of lack and low self-worth to ourselves. And this ends up feeding that low self-worth, right? This ends up feeding that lack of respect. And over time, we eventually feel not good enough. We, we don't respect ourselves. Other people don't respect us because we don't take care of our shit. We don't take accountability for our shit. We don't own our part. We don't follow through on our responsibilities. We don't follow through on our commitments. You know, we're not structured. And so this is a time of getting structured. This is a time of being a little bit more disciplined with that shit that you need to take care of. It's about growing up, accepting responsibility, owning your part, maturing, handling things in a mature way right? And so these are the themes that we're not only going to just see for this new moon in Capricorn, but we're going to see these unfolding over the next several weeks during Capricorn season. And we have a lot of stuff in Capricorn. Mercury is going to go retrograde in Capricorn in like a week. Okay. So we're going to be reflecting on a lot of these things coming up 
from now on, you know, for a little bit. So be prepared, you know, where in your life have you been neglecting your own inner power? Have you been neglecting your own responsibilities? Have you been unstructured or chaotic or all over the place or distracted or too caught up in your feelings about things? You know, it's time to like leave that at the door for now. And trust me, I'm someone huge about emotional healing and feeling your feelings and emotional intelligence and all that. So I'm not saying to neglect your feelings. I'm just saying that if you are drowning in your feelings, if you are waiting on your feelings to do, right, to get structured, to do what you need to do, to own shit and all of that, this is not the time for that. It is about the physical, your physical world, your what's in front of you, right? Getting shit done in your physical reality, in your physical environment, in the here and now. Not like, oh, I'm not in the mood. Oh, you know, I'm sad about this today or whatever. And, I, and I'm saying this because I've been experiencing this, okay? <laughs> Everything I say is usually from my own experience, okay? So, um, and I'm like, oh, like, because I'm always experiencing things that go perfect with the astrological transit. So, so if you are way too dependent on your feelings, your moods, other people's feelings, or if you're too in your head, you're too distracted, you're not in the physical realm, you're not in the here and now, you're not in reality, you're not, you don't wanna, you know, you're trying to escape or you're trying to blame others or not own your fucking part and keep your side of the street clean, then this time period will really push you into that, that path of doing that, okay? But if you work with it, then it makes it a hell of a lot easier, right? If you can, you know, set up about, like set up some boundaries for yourself, right? Start respecting yourself start taking accountability for the shit that you don't want to, that you know is your part, that you know is on you, but you don't want to admit it, right? Start like focusing on your responsibilities, your side of the street, the better you're going to feel. And these are lessons of your inner power, which I have a whole video on, by the way, about your inner power. If you want to go watch that, uh, it is very, very, it's a very good video. I'm very proud of that video. But anyway, so this Capricorn energy is about taking our goals, our big goals, right? That we we just want them to be here now, like yesterday, like right now with Jupiter and Aries, right? Like we are looking towards the long term. We're seeing the bigger picture, but we want it to happen fast. And this new moon in Capricorn's like, okay, but are you ready for that? Are you really ready for that? Like, do you have a plan? Do you have a backup plan? Do you know, like, are you in the space internally and externally to be able to hold this goal, to be able to hold this vision, to be able to receive this, to be able to manage this, right? Capricorn's very much about managing shit. So where in our lives do we need to step into CEO manager mode and start managing our shit? right? That's like, you know, all over the place. It's like we have a messy ass room and we've just kept it messy. But then we're also wondering why our minds are all over the place, right? And it's like, well, clean your room and then see how you feel. Like it may not cure everything, right? I'm not saying it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna cure everything, but it's a start. Your physical reality can affect you a lot. Your physical environment has a strong influence over you. And that's why Capricorn is the opposite sign to Cancer. Cancer is very much about our emotional and our internal worlds, where we feel safe, where we feel secure. Capricorn is where we feel safe and secure externally. And they're on an axis. So one affects the other, right? So when we begin to come up with a plan to have you know, to, to begin to be more practical, more realistic, more mature about things. When we, you know, look at what we need physically to feel stable, to feel secure, you know, um, and that what's going to like be secure and helpful in the long haul and in the long run, instead of just that instant gratification that fades really quick with Jupiter and Aries, right? Then once we can develop something like that, develop a plan, develop a foundation, for our goals, then we feel better emotionally. We feel better about ourselves. We literally are, you know, like our energy demands respect because we are clean within ourselves and we know what we're worth and we can manage shit. We can handle shit. And that 
creates the staircase and the foundation for the staircase to our bigger goals, our bigger vision, right? And so this is what this new moon and Capricorn is really all about, in my opinion, okay? And we also have Venus and Mercury and Capricorn. So not only are we, we have this new beginning here, this new beginning happening of, of, you know, our goals and, you know, owning our shit and managing shit, responsibility and like focusing on our duties and, and all of that. But we also have Venus here saying, this is what's attractive right now. This is what's in right now. You know, it's like attractive to be mature and be an adult about shit and to manage your shit and to own your shit and to be responsible for your shit. You know, this is what is attractive. And then we also have Mercury here. Like, this is what is on our mind. This is what is going to clear our mind. This is what we want to plan about, what we want to talk about, like all of that. So we have a lot of Capricorn energy right now that is very much about growing up, maturing, owning our shit, taking responsibility, and getting shit done. That is going to literally lead to the physical manifestation of what we desire, of our bigger goals. Because if we don't have a foundation for those goals to sit upon, then where are they going to go? Right? So let me know if you are still here. If you watched this first part of the video, I appreciate you very much. As always, you are a badass. Comment down below and let me know if you are a badass. <laughs> and we are going to go ahead and get into the 12 signs. Your rising sign will resonate most. Do you remember? These are just little short horoscopes of where they are happening, where this new moon is happening in your chart. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Let me know if you like the current setup. Obviously, it's mainly for the holidays, so it won't stay like this. But <laughs> let me know how you guys are feeling for this new moon. I love you. And let's get into the signs. Alrighty, Capricorn darlings, starting with you. This new moon is in your sign, boo. So this is a time all about you. This new moon is all about you, your personality, yourself, where you're going in your life, okay? So if you are a Capricorn rising or if you are a Capricorn sun and your sun is in the very beginning degrees of Capricorn, I mean like zero to five degrees of Capricorn, then you're really going to be feeling this uh, new moon. But this is definitely like a, a fresh start, okay? This is like new beginnings, new goals are forming, uh, new intentions are being set, you know? Like this is a new you that is forming right now, a new era for yourself that is forming right now as you plant new seeds for yourself, for your life, your direction, your appearance. This could be a time over the next few weeks where you're like, you know what? I'm going to fully step into and embody this version of me and change my appearance, change my looks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, so that is what this new moon is about for you. If you are a Capricorn rising, definitely let me know down below though, if this ends up resonating with you. Alrighty, Aquarius risings, this new moon in Capricorn is happening in your 12th house. So this could be a time where you're feeling more tired, where you're feeling a little bit more secluded, more introverted, where it's like a time of going within or withdrawing from your normal day-to-day -day life, your normal day-to-day -day world, your normal day-to-day -day responsibilities. So this could be a time where you're really reflecting on a lot of things, where you're maybe letting some things go. You know, this is a time where you're seeing things in a new light and you could possibly be a lot more tired around this time as well and sleeping a lot more, um, maybe letting go of old habits that are self-defeating or self-sabotaging could be another Kind of theme that this new moon brings up over the next few weeks so let me know down below if you notice any of those things coming up if you're an aquarius rising i would really love to hear your feedback so moving on to pisces rising so for pisces risings this new moon is happening in your 11th house of friends your social groups other people acquaintances things like this, networking, you know, just anything to do with your social life and your aspirations and goals in the world. So this is a really good time to focus on, you know, social achievements or social goals that you have or certain aspirations that you have and plant those intentions, right? To really plant those seeds in the dirt 
and go from there. Okay, so let me know down below though if any of this resonates with your Pisces rising. I would love to hear your feedback. Okay, Aries risings. This new moon in Capricorn is happening in your 10th house. So this is a time of new beginnings in your career, your public image, your reputation, your success, your achievements, authority figures, and your life path, like where you feel you're going in life. So these are, you know, this new, new moon could be bringing in big questions about your future, your past your career like where where you're going in the world like what you've achieved and what you still want to achieve this is a time where you could also be reflecting on things that you feel that have held you back or things that you feel you've quote unquote failed at you know and so but it's not to it's kind of I feel like this new moon's like it's not necessarily saying oh you failed like that's not what I'm trying to say it's more so of an energy like you know, there is no such thing as failure, right? Like it is all in our heads. So move forward, focus on, you know, what you have achieved instead of what you haven't achieved. And, you know, and also focus on where you're going in the future, where you want to go from here, your goals, like what you want to do with your life, you know? And so those are the big things that this new moon is bringing in for you if you're an Aries rising. So let me know if that resonates down below. So Taurus risings, this new moon's happening in your ninth house of belief systems, you know, your worldviews, where you're going in life, you know, the, the things that you learn, education, foreign travel. So this could be a time of really getting outside of your comfort zone, outside of what you think you know, and into something bigger, into a bigger plan, you know, your goals when it comes to you know, the education and knowledge that you want to acquire in life, whether that's through travel or education or experience or whatever, and how you want to get there and what you want to do about that. So if you're a Taurus rising and that resonates, let me know down below as always. And we're going to move on to Gemini. So Gemini risings, this new moon is in your eighth house of investments, business, other people's money, loans, debts, money that's owed to you or money that you owe to others any kind of mingling or exchange with finances and money, your partner's money, you know, shared resources, shared finances, anything like that, clients, services you offer. So this new moon is a new beginning in this area. This could be a time where you're wanting to really adult more, mature, uh, focus on goals that you have with your investments and finances and mature in those areas as well. You know, where maybe you're looking for new investments or new ways to bring in something more long-term, more stable, or more practical in terms of money and finances. So let me know down below, Gemini, if that resonates. I'd love to hear your feedback. Cancer rising. So this new moon for you is happening in your seventh house of your relationships and other people. And so this is definitely a time where you could be reflecting on your close relationships and agreements, commitments with other people and how they influence you and your life. You know, maybe you are really starting to mature and grow up and be more realistic and practical in terms of your relationships. And this could be a new beginning that's really signifying that. OK, so let me know, Cancer, down below if that resonates. I'd love to hear your feedback. We are going to move on to Leo Risings, my fellow Leo Risings. This new moon is happening in our sixth house of work, health, day-to-day -day routines, our habits, you know, what we do physically on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, have we been slacking off? What are we actually getting done throughout the day? What are the physical tasks that we need to do? Do we need to kind of get out of our heads or get out of like, you know, this, this realm of maybe just being lazy or sleeping or, you know, where we're really, um, sorry, my cat, <laughs> where we're really kind of getting out of reality somehow, like where do we need to come back down to earth and take care of what's physically, what physically needs to be take, taken care of, right? So there could be certain tasks, chores, errands, duties, you know, responsibilities, like where do we need to focus more on our responsibilities, grow up, mature and get shit done. So if you're Leo rising, let me know if that resonated down below. I'd love to hear your feedback. We are going to move on to Virgo rising. So for Virgo risings, this new moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, dating, and children, and what you find fun and passion in. And so those are the things that you could be seeing come up for this new moon. This could be a new beginning that's kind of starting here in terms of your goals with these things and 
where you want to take some of these things more seriously in your life. If there's a passion or love interest or, you know, um, <laughs> you know, like something to do with your kids that you want to take more seriously or make more structured in your life, this would be the time where that's getting brought up. So if you're a Virgo rising, definitely let me know down below if that resonates with you. And we are going to move on to Libra rising. So for Libra Risings, this Capricorn new moon is in the fourth house of home, family, your foundation, your roots. So this is a time where you're really going to be noticing uh, that you are more focused or concerned with your internal world, with your emotional world, with your past, maybe nostalgic, with your home life, with your family. You know, where does that need to be more structured? Where does your attention need to shift to this area, maybe because it's been neglected in some way, or you need to take some responsibility for something or focus on your responsibilities in these areas if you haven't been able to give it your energy fully for whatever reason. This is a time where you're getting real practical and raw about your home life, your family, your foundation, and living situation, you know, things like that. So if you're a Libra rising, let me know if that resonates with you down below. So moving on to Scorpio rising. So Scorpio, this new moon is happening in your third house of your environment, your community, you know, your day-to-day -day friends and the people that you talk to, the places that you go um, on a day-to-day -day basis, your neighbors. So there could be a lot more of a focus on your day-to-day -day life, your environment, what's going on around you, right? Um, like what's actually physically happening around you and in your day-to-day -day life. And, you know, instead of maybe you, I don't know, like drifting off in another world or drifting off in another realm or whatever, it's like grounding you back into the now, back into the present moment. And where does this need to be structured a little bit more? You know, you could be having a lot of errands or completing a lot of tasks or, you know, doing a lot of different things in your in your environment, you know, uh, and things like that. So that is what I see coming for you. If you're a Scorpio rising, let me know if that resonates with you down below. Sag rising, this new moon is happening in your second house of money, income, finances, resources, and priorities. So this is a time where you're really getting back to your priorities, you're restructuring your priorities, you're focusing on your income, your money, and how you can maybe mature here or do something that's going to bring in more stability or something for the long haul, right? Like something that you can do that's going to create more stability, that's going to be more practical, and that's going to pay off in the long run, right? So these are things that you're really thinking about in terms of your income, resources, money, you know, and priorities. And so let me know down below, Sag, if that resonates as always. And that is the end of this new moon video. New moons are short, <laughs> you know, like, and there's not too much going on with this one other than the trine to, or I'm sorry, the square to Jupiter. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.